Welcome to VideoTutorial.net's SOLIDWORKS course on surface modeling. Before I get started, I did want to mention that many of the tools and skills I describe are covered in previous volumes of our SOLIDWORKS course, so check those out if you need some refreshing on some of the basic tools and skills. What exactly is surfacing? Let me describe with an analogy. In the first volume of this course, we use the extrude tool to create an extrude just like the cube that I've got here. I can use a solid piece of metal to create this cube, or I can use, let's say, some thin aluminum foil to create the same cube. The difference is that the cube created from the foil is going to be hollow. This hollow cube is built from surfaces. Now foil is technically not a surface since it still has some thickness. A surface has zero thickness. When we built solids in the earlier volumes of this course, like the cube I've got here where we started with a sketch and then extruded it, we actually created six surfaces and then SOLIDWORKS did the rest. In other words, SOLIDWORKS knit the surfaces together to enclose the volume and it became a solid. All of the surfaces in my model here are stitched together. Everything inside is considered a solid. You may be wondering why we need to use surface modeling rather than, for example, just making this hollow by using the shell command. In some cases, that would actually be the appropriate thing to do. But creating your parts with surface modeling has many advantages. Let me illustrate with an example. Let's make sketches 2 and 3 visible. To bring up the surface tool set, just right click on the tab set and then select surfaces. Now I'm going to activate the lofted surface tool. We'll select the first sketch and the second sketch. Let's adjust the handles a little bit. We get a preview of the surface. Let's click OK for now. I will be covering this tool in much greater detail in this course. Now let's activate the Cut with Surface tool. We specify the direction of the cut, and then click OK. All right, let's right click and hide this surface. As you can see, with just a couple mouse clicks, we've got a solid with a fairly complex non-planar face. And as you can imagine, that's why surface modeling can be so cool. When people refer to surfaces, they're often referring to more complex shapes, but that's not always the case. Surface modeling gives you more efficiency and flexibility when you're creating simple geometry as well. Some surfaces can also be used as references. Sometimes surfaces are also used as references. However, by the end of the day, the goal of most surface modeling is to finish with a solid. Let me just wrap up this introduction by answering the question I'd posed earlier, why we need surfaces. In many cases, you may not need surface modeling as the most efficient and effective way to arrive at your solid. In many cases, it is possible to create workarounds without surface modeling. However, the surface modeling gives you a lot more flexibility. Without the concepts and tools of surface modeling, some engineering work can be very error-prone and cumbersome. This concludes our introduction to surface modeling. 